Hello everyone! Within the city-state of Ulda stands the Tomater's Guild, and that is where our story began. We joined it as a fledgling adventurer, and with time became a formidable Tomater, and in this video we will explore the next phase of our story, which is the Black Mage questline of our Elm Reborn. This tale starts one day as we enter the guild hall, only for Yayake, the guild receptionist, to call us over. She tells us she has been waiting for us and asks if we know of the Marasaya pit. We being quite unfamiliar with it, she explains it's a prison within Ulda, and one of the prisoners named Kukuruka Tataruka, who has just finished serving 100 years of his life sentence, has started claiming he hears the voice of Naldal himself. Now Naldal is the guardian deity of Ulda, making this one hell of a claim. Now the claim alone wouldn't bother the guild too much, but the prisoner also spoke of us by name, and claims that Nalthal wants us to win the gem of Shetoto and exchange it for his release. The Lalafell also claims to be a black mage, a magical art long lost to the people of Eorsia. We do agree with Yayake that this guy probably has gone quite insane in the prison. Nonetheless, as he has invoked the name of Nalthal along with our name, the Orta feels it's best to investigate and as our name was mentioned, this is now our problem. To start, we must head to Highbridge in eastern Thanalan and seek out a planar fissure, a rift between our world and the next. Then we must kill whatever beast is there and pour the blood on the ground, and apparently, according to Kukuruka, this will cause us to somehow receive the gem of Shetoto. Now we know this gem is just a fairy tale told to children, but this is what we were instructed to do, so off we had to do just that. We do find the rift where it's described and kill the being from it, after then liberally watering the ground with his blood, an Amalja comes over. We of course ready our weapon, as the Amalja are old enemies of Ulda, and also prone to summoning primals. This one asks us to wait. He tells us his name is Kasakja, and he means us no harm. In fact, he has brought us the gem of Shatoto. And then he just wanders off, leaving us there puzzled as we stare at the beautiful purple gem. Now after this rather peculiar line of events, we decide to hurry back to the guild, where we find Yayake, and show her the gem. She is stunned, feeling the great power emanating from it, telling us only those blessed by Naltal himself are entrusted with keeping of the gem, at least according to the tales. She must investigate this further, and we of course must assist her so she takes the gem away from us. But first, she is quite concerned about Kukuruka. He may have found a way to contact the outside, and is manipulating adventurers to do his bidding. So first she will call an emergency council of the Order, so we can figure out what to do next. But just as we are about to do so, the door to the guild hall closes, and we are met by no other but Kukuruka himself, out of jail, along with his assistant, Lalai. Immediately, Yayaki wants to know how this convict escaped, and he just tells her that he simply convinced the guards to let him go. Apparently, they had the wisdom enough to listen to one able to speak to the gods. Now, Yayaki does not believe he speaks for Nalthal, but Kukuruka doesn't care. He warns her and us that the seal of the Void Gate will be broken soon, and when it opens, the only one able to close it is the bearer of the gem of Shetoto, and that is us, and somehow we realize the gem has appeared back in our possession. Holding this gem apparently marks us as the Mage of the Black, and we must go forth seeking out the keys required to seal the Void Gate for good, and this Void Gate opening would be a disaster to all, making a way for the creatures of the Netherworld, the Void, to get into ours. We are instructed to seek out Lalai for our training and then Kukuruka and Lalai simply leave, no matter how much Yayaki protests. We stand behind stunned, listening to the distant angry rambling of our guild receptionist, before we make a choice. This stuff equals a lot of power, so of course we're gonna check this out, so off we run to find Lalai. We do find her and she is indeed willing to train us. Now this meeting is rather odd, as he tells us we can't meet Kukuruka right now, as he is off meditating and listening to Nalthal who apparently always speaks, but Lalai does have a task for us from Kukuruka. 
and to give us this task, C gets possessed. All right. We are told the next key requires some blood sacrifice. Like before, we must head out of the city, find a planar fissure, kill the creature within, and pour the blood on the ground. This act will apparently notify our friends in the wasteland that the time has come. We do the simple task, finding the fissure in the Zakoli desert this time. We kill the creature, water the earth with the blood, and return to Lalai. And she points out that while the Order of the Black Mage is barely known to most, and there are very few writings about it, there are books relating to black magic in the Sacrarium. One Skukuruka deciphered Erati's text a century ago, and he was the one to find other members and entrust them to the sealing of the Void Gate. But this type of magic is powerful and destructive, and can lead to the most tragic of disasters. Lalai doesn't know why the black mage is vanished, but Kukuruka does, and all he will say on the matter is that we must not repeat the errors of the past. Then Lalai seems to get possessed again. We are told that by putting the blood in the desert, a message was delivered to three souls of three races who have now come to Thanalan, and we must go meet them. As these are the keepers of the embers that remain of our order, these three will become our allies in closing the Void Gate. So we head out to Eastern Thanalan, where we meet the three in a cave. They are not what one would expect, being members of the three larger beast tribes within Eorsia. First is the Amalja who handed over the gem, along with him is an Ixal and a Kobold. It is a surprising mix and still they indeed are our allies, and their role will be to pass their knowledge on to us. But first there are more rituals of planar fissures and watering the earth with blood. We head to an area known as the Silent King to finish the task under the watchful eye of our three companions. As we return back to the cave, Kazak speaks to us. He tells us this activity has truly proven we are the heirs of the dark and ancient powers. The one Kukuruka foretold. In fact, this reminds Kazak of a prophecy his great-grandfather spoke about a long time ago. When four magi met in a barren land, black power of eld woven by their hand. Shall see the fate of wickedness made star, and the path of light shall be lit by dark. Kazak believes this prophecy speaks about the seals of the void gate faltering, letting it break open. But with us here, he is filled with hope that we can handle it. He tells us how his great grandfather was mocked and ridiculed for his prophecy. But here we are, fulfilling it nonetheless. And that brings Kazak great happiness. But he warns us that our ability is linked to the void gate. And if the gate opens, we would be in great danger. So we must prepare the best we can before that fateful day. So we take some time to train and prepare, strengthening both our body and mind before returning. This time to be tested by Dosol. He has noticed our aura is strong. And like Kazak, he warns us about the Void Gate. How it can draw us to it like a moth to a flame as it seeks out black magic to corrupt and make its own. The seals are waning, and while we still have time, Dosal believes he should hurry to find the next key to sealing the gate. He tells us that in the past there were many black mages, and even epic black mages. This epic mage knew how powerful the magic was, and how it could not fall into the wrong hands. So the magic was ciphered, made a secret, and the dark ways were only passed on to selected few. The teachings were then written down and spread across the realm written in a secret way only the chosen ones could actually read. Once's writing is in fact in the south's route on a mossy pillar. We must go to it and learn all we can. This is the knowledge passed down from Dozal's great-grandmother, who was an epic black mage apparently, but one that is seen as a betrayer and was chased away from their village. But before that time they had passed this text on to the child, who passed it on to Dozal. This text seems to be a poem, the same one Kasa gave us the last time. Except instead of lit by dark, it is lit by squawk! Pixels are interesting. We do head to the south route to find this mossy pillar. It looks like just a regular pillar as we approach, but then our gem of Shetoto shines bright. And an inscription is revealed on the stone as in our mind rings out a voice. By the gem thou nearest shall the great and dark power of Eld be bestowed upon thee. But those 
who seek this power must first prove their worth. Behold the gloom that will be thy undoing cometh. Stay the glooms encroached by thy hand. Only then shall the umbral wisdom of the ages be gifted unto these. We are stunned by the sudden sound, only to realize the stone is actually very serious. Plainer fissures open up all around us. Dasa, who accompanied us to the pillar, helps us fight them off, sealing with us each fissure, as a new one seems to keep on popping up with hostile creatures just escaping from them. But in the end, we are stronger and able to return back to the Burgundy Falls, where we meet with our friends again. And they confirm our power has grown during this trial, but it's not our last, as the next trial is from Dasa, who, like the other, tells us a prophecy given by his ancestor around 100 years ago. Again, this is the same prophecy as the other two had. Dasa tells us his ancestor, the First Order Patriarch Dagu, was the one to decipher this legend, but as the Patriarch, he was forbidden from leaving the Copalt homeland, and yet he did, becoming marked as a traitor. Through our three friends, we have heard of three ancestors who around 100 years ago found the same prophecy, were marked as betrayers or madmen by their people, became great black mages, and passed their knowledge down to the children and grandchildren leading to the three friends we have here. It sounds too convenient to be a coincidence. After all, it was also a hundred years ago that Kukuruka was jailed, as we learned at the start of our tale, but we cannot fully focus on that now, as Dasa hands us an ancient thing belonging to his family, a tablet of sorts. And just as the mossy pillar did, the tablet glows revealing a hidden writing. Know thee, brave keeper of Shatoto's light, as these very words was pain to thy sight. The seal what was cast doth shutter and sigh, and the void gate dread sundering draws nigh. To ward against the creeping of the gloom, thou needest great guard to stay any doom. To the sacred where thy thoughts must now tend, unto the black command, darkness shall bend. And it seems the time has finally come for the obligatory clothing gathering quest. A quest that every job has in a realm reborn, and thankfully never again. We must now head out to find the four pieces of our set. Thankfully the location are written down and according to Kazakh, we will require blood from the three of our friends to give them to the plain of fishers this time. And in return the fishers should just spit out clothing. We're not surprised that, yet again, whatever we do is related to blood somehow. Still, getting clothing from the void is definitely a new thing. We head to the designated places to find each fissure, we throw in the blood of one of our friends, and it truly does happen, the fissure throws out some clothes in return, before closing. After gathering the pieces, Kazak informs us the fourth piece should be in a place known as Thal's Respite. There we must find the fissure, kill the thing from it and water the ground with blood. We head there and this fissure is big, much bigger than the others. Still, we deal with it, taking down the fiends from it and watering the ground with their blood. Before closing, the fissure spits out the fourth piece of our outfit and now we head back, only missing the chest piece. As we meet up with Kazak, he tells us they haven't quite figured out where the last piece is. The tablet did give a clue about the location though. When a power worthy of relics claim, take root in one of righteous end and name, the solace of the gods will be made known, and the last seed of the black maids be sown. Thus I believe the place may once have been known as solace of the gods, though as we know of no such place today, it probably has changed the name since then. After all, at a minimum it has been a century since this thing was written, though our friends will study well, at least we put on the pieces. And as we're wearing four out of five pieces, we look kind of silly, but we do feel stronger. Kazak tells us that he has poured over every record his grandfather left behind and found one note that may relate to this place. It says the true power of destruction will be awoken in that most sacred of places. But he is unsure what this means. He tells us our other friends have headed to their homelands to seek out extra information of their own, and he believes it would be best if we speak to Kukuruka, perhaps he can guide us to the right place. We agree and head back to Ulda, seeking out Lalai, to ask for an audience with Kukuruka. But we find Lalai panicked and angry, 
Apparently, Kukuruka has vanished. In fact, she is convinced he is no messenger of the gods at all, but a charlatan. One hell-bent on opening the void gate, not sealing it. She tells us she hadn't heard from him for a while, so she went inside the chamber to check on him. There, she found proof of his crimes a hundred years ago, and his lies. From what she learned, a hundred years ago he conspired with mages from the Beast Tribe to summon in a creature known as Barbatos, a monstrosity that's meant to destroy all of Eorzea. This plot was discovered by the Order of Nalthal, the Void Gate was sealed before Barbatos could emerge, and Kukuruka was imprisoned. Thalai also found a note with scribblings left by Kukuruka. Four is the answer, four spells of black, four artifacts of eld, the blood of four races. By four alone shall the true power of destruction be awoken from the Void Gate. Well, this is not good. It's clear that the four he speaks about is us and our friends. The artifact will be the four pieces of outfit we wear, and the blood of four races, well, we did put the blood of our friends into the fissures. Perhaps the fissures were meant for Kukaruka to obtain the blood? All he needs is ours, or his own blood, and then there's not much we can do to stop him. Lalai begs us to go to Nal's reflection in southern Thanalan to stop him. So we do, of course, head over there, finding Kukuruka there, already performing a ritual of some sort, and before him a massive void being, seeming frozen in some sort of a bubble. We arrive, but not alone. Our friends are with us, making it four of us there, and making me therefore quite nervous. Kukuruka turns to face us just as the void fiend bursts out of the bubble, as Kukuruka falls unconscious. Faced with no other than Barbatos, we take up arms with our friend, as letting it go free could mean the end of all we know. So together we unite and beat this void fiend down. As we banish the thing, we approach Kukuruka, demanding answers. And we actually get them. It turns out Kukuruka was not trying to unseal the Void Gate at all, but instead to right a wrong from hundred years ago, when he travelled with the ancestors of our friends to this place to perform a ritual. He tells us about he was a very ambitious young mage in his youth, who thirsted for knowledge. He discovered ancient writing about black magic during his studies and was fascinated with the power they held. He spent days, weeks and months at a time studying the ancient tomes, slowly starting to master the dark art, but ever so slowly. It was not till he met our friends and sisters that his studies turned from slow progress to making leaps and bounds in a matter of days and weeks. From them he got the gem of Shatoto and the power to sense magic. The relics, everything came from them. Together they studied the black art and eventually found a ritual that could potentially restore black magic to its full expression. But Kukaruka was arrogant and foolish. Blinded with the lust for power, he altered the incantation of the ritual. And from there, everything went wrong. The ritual failed as a chaotic ether washed over his friends, ripping them apart and fusing them together into an abomination known as Barbatos. Kukuruka used his power to seal Barbatos behind the Void Gate, but lacked the strength to defeat it. He realized that he himself was corrupted by the ether, and being unsure if he could hold his powers in check, he decided to have himself imprisoned, so he could never harm anyone. He used his powers to manipulate the mind of Eutomatertius, and created the belief he had committed some horrible crime, so he was imprisoned in the Marasaya pit, where he could harm none. And there he waited for someone strong enough to emerge and finish what he could not, and that turned out to be us. The place we now stand in is known as Nald's Reflection, but once it was known as Solace of the God, and here Kukuruka hands us the fifth and final piece of the outfit, a final act before he gives into his eternal rest. As he dies and vanishes, we are saddened by his fate, but glad he did not mean to betray us, and that Barbatus is gone, and hopefully the souls of his three friends are put to rest. 
and that our three friends know more about their ancestors now than they ever did before. If an hour tale is a black mage is at an end, we say goodbye to the jobs of our elementary board and look towards the future adventures and expansions to come. Thank you so much for watching this video, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you like more content like this, I recommend checking out what YouTube is offering on the screen now. And if you want to make sure to see all my future content, please remember to subscribe and press that notification bell. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day.